Luca Nation, your weekly PWCC episode, episode 853 of Lucas Tigers and Bronze, your sports card podcast, daily news, topics, guests, ideas, rants, everything under the sun when it comes to the hobby, collecting. Luca Nation, we want to welcome you guys back. I'm really excited for today's show. We've got my co-host, Mr. Cage Lawyer in the house. Yo, yo. Everybody who we do like business calls with or like intro business calls with is like, is Cage your real name? From yes. here on out, we answer that question as a resounding yes. Cage yes. is my real name. It is. Cage. Cage Pele Jones. It's my full name, if you want to know my middle name. Dude, can we just jump right off? And we could talk about sports and stuff like that. But, but I, there's a card in the weekly auction, because you know we're talking about the PWC weekly yep. auction, that I saw it and I was like, oh, man, Andrew's got to talk about this because it's a topic you've brought up before. So okay. are you ready, to, you ready to pull something up for me? I, national Treasures. National right? Treasures. You talk about – what's the first year of National Treasures? 2009, actually, I believe, Okay, right? so you say 2009. So do me a favor. Put in National Treasures Joe Montana. I like this card a lot. Okay. And With a crazy patch? It's all, the, the tag patch. The tag patch auto out of 10 is what, is what, we're, what we're pulling up here. But what you're going to notice when you do this is – I mean, it's a cool patch, man. It's a sticker auto. What you're going to notice is it's from 2006. And once you pull it up, you're going to be like, what? What? What's going on over here? This was before National Treasures was bought out by Panini, right? Boom. 100% right. I mean, talk about a really cool piece, right? So this is Playoff, which is now, we all know, a Panini brand. Playoff National Treasures. So here we are. 2006 playoff national treasure Joe Montana timeline. Look at this signature with a really cool prime jersey pieces in here, you know, with like the the tags. Just a really cool numbered out of ten Montana Jim Min Ten card. Um, I mean, you got the National Treasures brand carrying, you know, before Panini took it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when you look at what modern stuff sells for. You know, what would a Joe Montana, I mean, it's not an RPA, obviously, but what would it have a National Treasures? This is 06 National Treasures. And as we record here, this is card is at $380 with some sick, all those sick patches, right? Gorgeous card, Wilson. gorgeous patch. Pat, pop one from 2006. Cage, this isn't a sticker auto, right? What do you consider this right here? I don't know. I mean, I was looking at it also. I was trying to zoom in on it. Um, let's take a look. I think it might be a it's sticker, but it's like vibes. underneath. Yeah, you know it's what like I mean? the gold standard vibe. Gorgeous card. And I like down the side they have like 93, 94, 95, 96 to 2000. Uh, I just think it's aesthetic. It's a timeline. Yeah. Pretty cool, aesthetically man. Aesthetically pleasing card. Gage. Yo. Most of the top, let's call it 15 cards in price. You know, I always like to sort highest bid all the way down. There are a ton of LeBron refractors, LeBron rookies in this auction. What do you, what does that tell you? And would you be worried buying into LeBron now? So there's a LeBron refractor PSA 10 with the gold, kind of the gold uh, diamond. Then you have an old label LeBron. You have a black refractor. There's two of his uh, tops paper rookies. Basically, 60% of the highest bid items today when we're recording it Saturday are LeBron. What does that tell you? I mean, it tells me a couple things. Number one, people were hoping to get LeBron and sell it when the season started. So here we are, you know, 10, 15 games into the season. And all right, maybe I'll buy LeBron in the offseason and sell when the season starts. Um, to me, I don't know whether or not that's going to work this week because you have two going head to head against each other. Literally the top two price cards are the exact same card. Um, gem 10. I think what you'll learn is, um, you know, what the difference in value is between a, I don't want to call it an older label, but it's not the most recent lighthouse slab on Mm -hmm. one. And the other one is, I mean, this thing looks like it was graded last week. Um, you know, that's the that's the Mike Baker gold on it. But what's funny about this is, and I, I, I'm going to tell you, um, this is what happens with flash auctions. So I love PWCC. You guys know this, right? But unless I'm mistaken, right, when a premiere 
PWCC has the ability to kind of tailor what goes in and make sure that you don't have a head-to-head competition like this on these cards. The one without the Mike Baker sticker was in the entire time. You'll notice there's a full description on the yep. card. It talks about the draft, the whole nine yards, whereas the Mike Baker sticker one, if you, I'm glad you went here, man, because I did my research today. It was flash inserted less than a week ago. This was, I think November 5th it was flash inserted in. It's exactly um, what I'm uh, showing people here on the screen share. You could click on the item and look at asset description. And uh, the Mike Baker one was a flash inserted on November 5th at 9.46 p.m. Which means, I mean, look, it's it's the you know the the auction ends on the 13th, which means they didn't flash it in as late as Wednesday. Right. It has been running for a week. Obviously, people have seen it. They got the eyeballs, but you know, it is um, you know it's it's somebody who might not have looked <laughs> to see that there was already one of these listed in the auction, or didn't care, or thought, well, you know, mine's got the gold label and the newer slab, so people are going to bid on this one. Um, you know. Bold strategy, Cotton. I guess we'll see how you know we'll see how it pays off. But something that as soon as I saw the Mike Baker gold, I thought this would be an amazing BGS ten candidate. Perfectly centered. On um, the other one with the older label isn't as perfectly centered. Um, I know that isn't done as much before as much now, but a BGS ten on that card versus a PSA ten is a big deal, and that's a perfect card. That looks gorgeous, fresh graded, sharp corners, perfect centering what do you think about that card have you been watching that card's performance the last few months yeah i mean the card it, it's it's amazing to see i guess where the market has gone right because you know these, this is a weekly auction right and this these cards i mean i don't have you know access to a card lab or anything like that in front of me right now but i mean haven't these recently sold for fifty thousand plus each mm-hmm. you know um I know the BGS 10 sells for like 60. I know the PSA 10 sells for 50, 50 plus, right? So, um, you know, here you are with two of them being put into the same weekly auction at $50,000. It's, I mean, it's, I don't know whether, my first thought is you have less competition. Do you know what I mean? Like somebody is going to say, you know what? I'm not willing to pay the premium for the newer slab and the Mike Baker gold. I'm gonna settle in for the the slightly older slab and and hope to get that one for a bargain. It's kind of what my thought was when I saw it. I've been watching these and just today they flipped. The older slab was actually cheaper. Here's where I go with this, guys. If you remember a few weeks ago, I did like just a supply count. How many of Curry's, how many Lucas, how many LeBron's? There's 176 LeBron cards in this auction. Wow. Just a few weeks ago when I did this, there were about 50. A few weeks ago when I did this, there were about 150 Curries. You want to take a guess how many Curry cards are in this auction with him playing Lights Out? Not as many. 45. Oh, and two of, them being, two of them <laughs> being Del Curry. <laughs> That's funny. So supply has, has dwindled on Curry cards, specifically high-end Curry cards. There's a few. There's a, his refractors available, uh, his top scrum rookie, but – other than those, outside of those, and you know, I think one more rookie auto, there are not a lot of high end curries. Contrast that with there's a ton of LeBron really, really nice rookies towards the top of this. But auto. I mean, so the interesting part about it, right, becomes if there's a shift of this, right? I mean, you know, after Tom Brady started off the season pretty terrible, there was an increase in supply of Tom Brady. 100%. And, you know, I think if that turns around, all of a sudden, People who bought in Tom Brady may be able to sell Tom Brady, you know, towards the end of the season with a different exit for more money. Um, the people who are so so, I own a LeBron Refractor BGS ten. We've talked about this on the show, right? So here we are talking about the PSA ten. I own this card in BGS ten, um, and I'm not. I'll tell you, I paid sixty seven thousand dollars for it, so I'm likely underwater a little on the card. Uh, but I didn't buy it to flip it and sell it in, in two days, you know, after I bought it. I bought it because I think it's an iconic card and, you know, I didn't have too much exposure to LeBron. Uh, But when I bought it, we we went through the episode where I talked about the different potential exits there are on this card. And one of the potential exits was leading up to the season. You know, let's see what the Lakers do. Maybe they sign somebody. Maybe they get Kyrie in a trade. You know, maybe the team starts to look good. Maybe the team is looking great, blah, blah, blah. Then maybe they're not, but – He's hopefully going to play enough and not be injured like he is. And there's another exit, middle of the season, last third of the season, when when he's 
possibly, probably breaking Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's all-time scoring record, right? Then maybe the team makes the playoffs and there's another exit there. Or maybe the exit is when he retires or, or maybe Bronny is coming and, and playing with him, the whole deal. So we talked about the different, you know, ramps here, the entrance, the exits, you name it. The people who own these cards that are putting them in Premier, their plan was to exit when the season started. They do not want to wait for the other potential exits. And I believe that maybe it's a liquidity thing. Maybe it's a market thing, right? Maybe it's just LeBron doesn't look good and they want to cut bait on LeBron and get whatever they can on LeBron now. Maybe the Mike Baker one is recently graded and somebody's into it for not that much. Who, who knows the reason why? But the people who are selling these are not willing to wait for the next exit. And maybe people who buy them, maybe they're holding it as a forever home, but maybe they're looking for one of those other exits as a more high point um, to you know to buy now and sell. That's I mean, you know, we go through there's what gonna you see some, on the There's going to be some standard. LeBron steals. In my opinion, I think there's going to be some real opportunities with with the, just all of the cards available in this auction. Well, this for happens. You know, this happens. It happens. It happens with Curry, right? If Curry, if the team, look, he had a great game last night, but if the team, you know, doesn't perform, right? Curry stuff is susceptible to to being dropped, right? And and you know, you don't you don't appreciate the you know the body of work that someone has done until it's too late sometimes, right? Well, and you see, you know, Brady stuff. Brady, of anybody who's active, Brady stuff should be more immune to a price drop than anything. But it's not. I mean, he is going to retire as the GOAT. Doesn't need to accomplish anything more to become the GOAT, right? I mean, I'm a Montana guy. You guys know this. But I will concede. Brady's the best that ever did it, whether he wins this year or not. But still, the pricing on his cards factored in some continued success. And he's not having that continued success. But I think I that's because... Saw- uh, a post the other day where it was like I was looking for this card for like three years from 2017 to 2020, and it never it never came up for auction or anything. And then the increase in prices brought these cards out. Really important moment. I've been looking for X card for three years, and then the increase in prices brought the card out. What does that mean? Whenever there's a run, Super Bowl win, a run in prices, you start to see more supply of especially of iconic rare cards because. Now the owner of that card is more likely to part with it. They're like, I could get 20x what I want, yeah. or 5x. So, so what I'm seeing is, like you said, people waited for the start of the season to get rid of, to let go of their LeBron. Supply came out, drove prices down. I'm seeing the reverse with Curry. I see after his championship to, to maybe mid-September, is we saw all of this Curry supply. I think I even said in one auction there was like, 50 patch cards, game-worn patch cards of Curry. There's no demand that could sustain that over a short period of time. But now we're starting to see some of his best stuff dry up. And I expect Curry prices, especially the way he's playing, to start kind of peaking back up, whereas I expect the next month, two months, a little bit more LeBron supply to hit the market. Yeah, I mean, entirely likely. But you see how quickly this stuff changes. So I think the, I think you're right, Um you know, with, with this much supply, there will be some LeBron steals in this auction. 100%. Any so you other just wrap there and just, just to help. So, do I talk about young studs? I want you to riff on this. I'm going to tell you the card, you pull it up, and then talk to me about it, right? Um, Shields, NBA, Logo Man, One of Ones, the right One of Ones, the whole deal. Auto versus non auto. Logo Man, that's not auto. You name it. I have one for you on a guy who you love. 2017 National Treasures, tremendous Patrick Mahomes rookie shield patch one of one BGS nine. Best young quarterback in the league. Andrew compares him to Michael Jordan. It is a top National Treasures card with shields becoming you know more expensive. I don't know how many shield cards there are. I know there's laundry tags, hats, eye blacks, all kinds of stuff. But this is, you know. National Treasures, the RPA is out of 99 sell for a ton of money. I know this is not autographed, but it is a shield patch, one of one from National Treasures, selling for like 10% of the price of, of what the RPA out of 99 sells for. In a very high grade as well, Talk to by me. the way. I know it's a one of one, but this is a high grade with like 9.5 corners. When you look at a thick card like this, look how thick this patch is as well to see. Andrew nines and a 9.5 across the board. You're getting a nice condition card. Uh, what worries me with this card before I talk about Mahomes yes. is Mahomes doesn't have any game-worn stuff. So this is player-worn 
and non-autographed. And what's also frustrating is there's no rookie stamp. So we know it's a rookies. It says it right here, but there's no rookie stamp. Now, all that aside, Cage, I, I do think Mahomes is going to the Super Bowl this year. Um, I think he's far and away the best quarterback in the league by a mile. And I think he's going to be the best quarterback in the league for the next five, seven years. I don't know what the right NT of his to buy outside of the million dollar ones. That makes Isn't that it crazy. Really challenging. Isn't mm-hmm. that crazy? You could be the right guy, but not the right card. It yeah. really is an amazing thing. And that's the most frustrating thing, I think, as an investor collector, is to buy the right guy in the wrong card because then you have to sit on it and you you know you effed up. Any thoughts on that? No, I mean, the, the thought that you have is exactly the thought. It makes it very hard to put your bet down on a player. It's what makes cards different than anything else, right? You're It's not roulette. You're not picking the number, and if the number comes up, great. you got to pick the number, you know, and – the, the right number, you got to pick a number and a suit, right? It can't just, it can't just be a nine. It's got to be the nine of spades or the nine of clubs. Like, you know, yeah, it really is an amazing thing. And with the, with the amount of stuff that's out there, I believe it also becomes harder for things to kind of run, right? And we talked about this last week. I don't want to belabor the point, but like, you know, we talked about the Luca blue, right? And how, how much distance it had between it and the red and the purple, which is actually lower numbered. And, you know, I mean, it, the hobby likes what it likes is what I'm yep. going to say. And and be careful trying to outsmart the hobby. I've tried to do it myself. People have tried to do it with Select and with Optic, saying it's going to be the next big thing. If you're coming into the hobby trying to find the next big thing, more than likely you're going to end up with something that very few people besides you want. Or be prepared to hold for a long time. I agree. Speaking of the one that people don't want, Everyone wants the Fleer Metal 2022 release that came out. Nobody wants this 1996 cut above Michael Jordan that's on premiere. I mean, that's a fake one by comparison to the cool one where he's wearing a T-shirt that I pulled out of my boxes. The Michael Jordan market, man, it's um, – it's the collector base on that is, is as passionate as I've ever seen. This one's cool because it's BGS 95 Gem, Gem Plus subgrades, 96 EX – 2000 cut above Michael Jordan. Really cool card. You know, this is one where the Jordan snobs, this is in the Jordan snobs collection. I mean, if you're a Jordan snob, this is a card you own. Right, Cajun? I hate 10 centering on cards that go to the borders. It pisses (laughs) me off. It makes no sense. It's one of my biggest hobby pet peeves is 10 centering grades on cards without a border. All right. How do you know? You, You don't, I mean, my biggest peeve is an edge grade on a perforated card. <laughs> it's a little different, I guess, right? <laughs> but you can see if like, if the edge right here or right here is ding, that's an edge grade. But uh, you, fair point. Where is the edge? Where is the corner? Yeah, I mean, where's the um, edge? Where's the corner? But this is a cool card. People why love do people this card. love this card so much? Because it's just, I mean, the die cuts were cool back in the 90s. That was what was coming in. You know, it's, it's a very hard and high grade. Um, the cut above is in is in multiple different sets, um, and you know it doesn't carry over as you can see here to the, the pricing on a Jerry Rice. But this this is the same thing, right? The supply, the demand. There's way more demand for Michael Jordan than every one of these other guys combined. Speaking of, uh, just to carry it over, one of the coolest rookie cards that I think this guy has, and it's a it's a rookie auto out of ninety nine, but it's not a National Treasures RPA, but it's really cool. It's one I wouldn't mind buying, even though it's not the one people don't gravitate to. But I think it's a cool combination of culture and cards. Take a look at this card, because you don't see them that often. 2018 Panini Noir Sneaker Spotlight Luca Rookie Auto out of 99. It's in a BGS 8.5. One of those cards that, sure, I'd love to have a higher grade, but isn't that a cool card? You know, you get a, a Rookie Auto Luca with the, you know, it's definitely a fan favorite product and release people like these sneaker spotlights um you know you got a combination of of i mean this is a culture collision card right here if you ever saw one right why do people like the sneaker spotlights because they they, on panini direct they did them as well i i never gravitated towards them but people do like them why do you think it is cage because i think you know sneaker collectors that's another thing right people can people collect sneakers it's part of the culture you know, the Jordan brand is built on the Jordans. You got LeBron has his own shoes. 
especially for basketball, it kind of it's it's intertwined with the you know the players themselves, the players we collect. Um, you know, this one has a nine auto, so that's kind of holding it back slightly. Lucas' mom didn't do a good enough job on this one, but um, you know, see the nine auto on it. I do see the nine auto on it. But I, I just think this is a cool card. You just don't see come up for auction and at the price that it's at. Like this is one I made. I might actually be in on. There is a Michael Jordan Gatorade set throughout the years. Do you know about the Michael Jordan Gatorade cards at all, Cage? Yes, a little bit. So there's a set of six of them that is trading at 56 bucks. Trading. Woo! Hey, now. Explain. So Gatorade was the thing in the 90s, right? They had yeah, the, Be Like uh, Mike. That was his campaign. The, be Like right? Mike. They're, I mean, there are Nike promo cards as Gatorade. Gatorade actually, I think, sponsored the Slam Dunk competition. I think there might even have been Gatorade star cards. You know, like, uh, you know, the, the star cards you see for Jordan. It might have been like a Gatorade Slam Dunk competition sort of like sl- uh, subset. Just another branding. You know, just another branding type. I think there's a Michael Jordan Entenmann's card. You know? So, you know what Entenmann's is, right? Good. Struggling to spell Gatorade. I apologize. G A T O R, like a gator. A D yes. E. I got it now. It's like Florida Gators. Gatorade, so water. Six stuff. cards graded by Beckett. 56 bucks. 1999 Upper Deck Michael Jordan complete set of six. Thought this was pretty cool. Um, under 100 bucks. I, I don't know much about this set, but thought it would be cool to get kind of for a collector. Um, this is probably my favorite one. It has like that Fax Missile Gold Auto on it. I like Any it. thoughts before we move on? No. How about a Pele? Did you how see about the Pele? A Pele? Did you see the 58 Pele? There's always, there's always re- you know, different Pele's, right? This one's not really seen too often. It's a PSA 4. Uh, don't ask me how to say it, but 19, just type 1958 Pele for me. That should be enough. Another Pele. Like- another different Pele. It's not an alphabet one. Not an alphabet soup one. There's another one that you just don't see too often. A little Pele, 50, there's more than 158. This, this is the right PSA here? 4 Edizion Figurine Calcio Cone Dishy. See it? There we go. Only eight graded by PSA. Only one higher than How this. Is, this is not a card, though. Well, let's talk about it. What is it if it's not a card? It's a piece of cardboard with nothing on the back and his photo on the front. <laughs> That's what cards were. Soccer is not a real sport. And it definitely wasn't a real sport in the 50s. I'm just kidding, of course. I'm this just trying like to get paper, Andrew like irate here. Mache. But there were no tops. There were some, you know, Panini was making some stuff, right? But there were. this is what you get, you know? If you want to collect Muhammad Ali, you cut something out of a magazine or you, you use the Bancroft Tiddlers from 1965. I mean, this is what happens, right? I mean, you know, here's why the hobby is so confusing. That was cut out, right? Yes, cut out, yep. But there's no hand cut there. No. It's just graded a four. Because it would cut with a scissor, not a hand. Some people have sharp fingers. They do cut with their hand. <laughs> All right, fine. Don't 2018 Panini Flawless Gold Trey Young Rookie Patch Auto out of 10. You're never going to make Trey happen. If you believe in Trey, is this the time to buy? Trey's price is about as low as they're going to get. We're not going to be fooled, man. We know what he is. He's a chucker with low pr- shooting percentages. He's a chucker with low shooting percentages. All right. So you you're not a trade disagree? believer. There are obviously trade believers out there. You know, you might not be one of them, but there's definitely trade believers. And you like flawless, flawless gold out of 10. Doesn't get much nicer than that. Are you a trade believer? Put it on record right now. Are At you $525 tra- for this card, I might have to be a trade believer. Right? Because what does this sell for for Luca? What are these flawless cards? So, I mean, you know, I know he's not Luca and all the whole deal, but I mean, there comes a point in time where, you know, the guy who led the league in scoring and assists and continues to put up numbers becomes a buy. No? It is. I think there's a lot of things that go against this card. I think the authentic grade for a modern card will scare a few people off. Uh, I think a nine auto, keep it off if you're not going to, if it's not going to get a 10. Um, but the things that are you've going for it, it's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous patch, and uh, it's out of time. There's another one too, right? Is there another uh, tray on here also? I think next to it, just just back out, just hit back. What is that one there? Collegiate. Look at that. You know, Collegiate. Okay. Yeah, Collegiate. yeah. From his OK Oklahoma days when he nobody was wants college. Still a chucker. 
He was still a chucker in those days, Cage. So, so here is a great segue because stats and talent do not necessarily mean that somebody is going to want to buy it. And I apologize to you four Joker fans out there who will yell at me for this like you do every single time. But check out the 2015 Immaculate Collection Joker RPA out of 99 in the BGS 90. Joker, because he came in 15, doesn't have as many of the crazy high-end uh, patch autos that a lot of the younger guys have now with these 500 different versions. Immaculate... While it's not flawless and it's not, you know, it's not National Treasures, you know, it kind of slots in there, and it's it's one of the uh, it's one of the higher end ones, and this one has a pretty sick patch. Again, it's a RPA at a ninety nine, two two thousand fifteen. Look at that patch, pretty cool, right? It is. I want to show you something. So here's the card. Check out the card next to it, Cage. It's got the, it's got his. It's an International Treasure release. Mm-hmm. National Treasures International. So let me touch on something because I'm glad you brought up Joker. Jokovic. Joker. Joker. Here's what happens. And you see this time and time and time again. So you had this Nuggets team trending up and they lost two stars or high usage guys or guys that need the ball in their hands. Tindry, Michael Porter Jr. and Jamal Murray. Jokic's numbers flew through the roof. You're going to see those numbers regress because the ball, there's one ball and it has to hit everyone's hands at the end of the day. So you're seeing Murray take the ball out of his hands, uh, MPJ take the ball out of his hands. This is going to be a down year statistically for Jokic. As a team, okay, they might go farther. I don't know. But statistically, this is going to be a down year for Jokic, and I'm interested how that's going to impact this card market. Well, what's better? If he puts up slightly worse stats but has a, uh, a run at a title, isn't that good? He has to have the run at the title. Okay. But but that's the that's the question. That's the dilemma. And why I say that is if we foreshadow, that's a dilemma that's going to hit Luca in the future too. There's going to be a time when Luca has more s- stars or star power or guys that could get the ball and score and expect that 36, 8, and 8 that he's putting up this season to go down. It happened with Jordan as well. Jordan scored 36 points a game, I think, in one of his first five yeah. years. And then yeah. when, he, Doug Collins – that whole thing is like you got to start playing as a teammate to win championships versus putting up stats. And you see that shift that's happened throughout the years with just about every player that's a high usage guy. Except Curry's putting up 40 points whenever he wants. That's because his team is not showing up anymore. With Durant, it was the reverse, right? He had worse numbers, but better. It's pretty team amazing, player. man. It really is. That I mean, it's and great analysis. I love it. I love it, and you're right. I mean, and and what's better for value? I say the championships. I say championships, then high performance versus high performance and then championships. Because after championships, there's that fall off, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think it's it's a worthwhile debate. I think people in the audience are curious. They'll have their own takes and leave their own comments. I have one more something to think about. If you're a collector like me, if you're Cajun and Cage, and you love PSA. You take them out to a nice seafood dinner and <laughs> always call them again. This is not for you. Hit the seafood. ear button. Don't listen. But there are amazing SGC 10 cards in this uh, in this auction, whether that's the Curry rookie, that's a 9-5. I'm bidding on that. Versus, you know, a Michael Jordan Molten. There's a, there's a Michael Jordan uh, championship metal universe. If you want a gorgeous card that you know is authentic and is graded fairly, for a fraction of the price of a PSA 10, there are some amazing, amazing SGC mid-tier to high-end cards in this auction that you should get your fingers on. Can I tell you one that I saw that I really liked? And now I'm not going to be able to win it, but this is we try to buy value for these guys. You could still win it, dude. Nah, now we got a whole bunch of competition. Really cool-looking card. It's impeccable, so it's not like you know the highest high-end stuff, but... I think his cards are getting beat down. I actually think he loses again this weekend, uh, but then maybe turns it around. But Herbert, the 2021 Herbert. Panini Impeccable Extravagance. Justin Herbert, patch auto out of 20 in an SGC 10. Obviously, pop one of one. There it it's is. It's got a really cool – you can pull it up if you like, but it's got a really cool patch. You know, Chargers colors. got the you know the gold, the blue, the white. Um, you're not sharing, but if you want to. There you go. Okay, cool. Um, in an SGC 10-10, really cool against the black backdrop. 
and this card at four hundred and twenty dollars. I mean, just that was just one that I had on my watch list. If you're a Jordan guy and you're used to Jordan prices being crazy and an SGC ten being um, you know, a bargain on it, there's a ninety seven Metal Universe Planet Metal Jordan, Correct. which everybody knows that card. The Z Force Rave Review in an SGC ten, that's a really nice card also. Um, if you just put in SGC ten, they'll be the first two that come up by price. Um, there's also a cool National Treasures Otani in an SGC 1010. Yeah, see those SGC 10. Look at those. I mean, just those are These nice. These are the three Jordan. that I was looking at for sure. There's also an Otani National Treasures Auto out of 25 with a 1010. Um, it's a full white card with some red. Looks nice in the black tux. It's a um, gorgeous card too. The warp yeah, speed. I mean, there's some. There's some really nice. There's some really nice stuff. You know, I mean, in and you're right. Um, in the SGC slabs, they're you know they're they're approachable, right? So, you know you can get a a rookie Trey Young auto for seventy six dollars right now in an SGC 10, 10, <laughs> 10, 10, 10 with the ten auto. One last one before we wrap up, Cage. This is where Cage and I probably disagree. Cage says Mike Trout is second fiddle to Otani. He knows baseball way right better than I. Uh, but there are three of Trout's Tops update uh 20 is 2011? Yep, 2011 update. Uh three of them in a PSA 10 in this auction. There's his Bowman Chrome prospects as well in 95. I think if you've been waiting to get into Trout, there may be opportunity. I'm a believer Cage you could say you're a piece. I like Trout, man. I definitely do, but I would have to see something else from that team to, you know, to make, uh, like you, you got, you just got these powerhouse teams being built up and, you know, look, they signed Anthony Rendon that didn't work. It seems like the moves they make don't work. And when you have basically like the two best players in the league, I love Aaron judge, but if I'm starting a team, I take trout and Otani before I take judge, just being honest, you know, I can't be just a Yankee Homer here. When you got that as your backdrop, you need the pitchers. You need legit pitchers. You need to really make a run because the shelf life for what these guys are going to do, it's just not It's not going to be there. You know what I mean? So, And the Astros are just that good. And the Yankees, you know they'll spend the money. And the Dodgers, you know they'll spend the money. And the Mets even are going to spend their money. You know, the, the Braves have a great young core. It's just – it's very, very difficult. And Trout, you know, Trout is going to go down as somebody who – you know, didn't reach their full potential. Almost Griffey in that regard, right? Because he had some nagging injuries and stuff like that. Is going to put up some great counting stats. Going to be thought of as one of the best of a generation, and just not win. Um, so, so if we're looking at charts. Take all that analysis into consideration. But Cage and I have talked about this, about this a bunch. Maybe something to think about as you move forward. Trout's tops update PSA ten, which is like his rookie card, right? It's considered mm-hmm. his only rookie card outside the. Uh, Bowman Prospects Auto, right? Yep, yep. It's down to the same price it was before the COVID run-up. Yep, so we looked if, at it. If you look at the card ladder value, on the tw- February of 2020, this was a $1,500 card. Today, 11-11-2022, there was a sale for $1,444.51. So something to take a look at as we've gone through this Eiffel Tower of prices. If we just block out that that insane run that we had during COVID, it might give you a bit more clarity. And here's an opportunity to buy someone, like Cage said, Griffey, amazing counting stats, never won. And if you are a believer, you could apply instead of Trout, someone else's name in here. And if you're seeing that, same prices as before the COVID run-up, that might tell you where at or near a floor for that card and that player. Is that fair to say? 100%. 100% right. 100%. That's another episode. Any final words before we go? No, take a look, guys. I mean, the SGC 10 is a cool one. But take a look at some of the cards that are in here um, that are just really cool for your forever home type of cards. If you're a Jordan person, you're a Jordan guy looking for a cool Jordan card for your, you know, for a collection. Um, like in an SGC 10, 96 upper deck crunch time. Really cool, you know, with like the yep. countdown and the shot. You know, if you're um, – and it's at $21. You know, if you're a Yankee fan or you're looking for a Christmas present for a Yankee fan or a kid, a nephew, whatever it is, Judge's Topps Chrome Rookie, 17 Topps Chrome Aaron Judge in SGC 10 Gem Mint, $21. 21 
21 bucks. I mean, like, you know, how you, how you going to beat that? And there's, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm pulling a couple from different, there's an Otani 10, you know, same $21. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, there's a Guys, lot of cool shit in here. You know, <laughs> there are some <laughs> things that I talk about that are my opinion. There's some things I talk about observation and there's other things that ex- are experience. As someone who subbed a lot of cards with SGC, I could tell you in Russian, we say like head could get cut off is like, are like, they grade accurately. They grade accurately. Secondary market. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that a PSA 10 and SGC 10 are close. They're not. PSA still is the investment staple of the hobby, but you could get some amazing, amazing cards that, you know, were authentic, fairly graded. And the condition is, is what it is for whatever percentage that you might think. So take a look. There's some really, really nice stuff. And if you stay with us till the end, here's a little bonus one for you. But you have to you have to be the person who listens to the end. Eastern whatnot. Don't miss it. Cage is heating up. Oh, yeah. 94 against the spread. In SGC 10, I, I mean, I don't want to go crazy on this guy. But I'm watching the games. I don't watch as much as you. But we all love 2014 Prism. It's a silver. There's not as many 2014 Prism Silvers as there were in 18 and whole deal. But a basketball rookie that is currently at $11 in an SGC 10. Pop one of one. So put in 2014 Prism Silver, Jeremy Grant. Has this guy started off just amazing this season? And he always seems he to has. put up steady numbers. But he looks like, you know, is this one of those NBA guys that you're, you know, you can see? And look, it's 11 bucks. Look at this car. He actually like, he's looks a, jacked here. He looks bigger here than he does now playing. Yeah, he kind of thinned out. He also was on the Sixers there. But, I mean, <laughs> what does look that at mean? that. You know, Been cheating and, and stress? That maybe it's not him. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, the Sixers. Hopefully, you know, he didn't – in 2014, he didn't have Doc Rivers as a coach. So, you know, he wasn't he wasn't coached poorly is what that means. Um, no, but, I mean, there's, there's, there, there are these sneaky plays in the auction, $11. You know, it's for, fair uh, to say that whatever Sixers did with the process did not work. They missed on all draft picks except for Embiid, and they gave away their best talent for junk. I'm so with you, dude. Uh, I was listening to the Trailblazers game, and they were talking about how when he went to, uh, I believe Detroit, how he wanted them to start running the offense through him, and he thought he he could be that guy, and he worked on his skill set. Uh, and it, it's showing, man. That's a good team. That's a good Trailblazers team. Jazz are first. I think they're second. And those were two teams that everyone said are rebuilding. Now, I think the Jazz are going to regress. But that Trailblazers team are an interesting team. And one or two pieces away from really making a run uh, at the Western Conference Finals. And he's a big part of why, in my opinion. There you go. I mean, you can spend hours looking through this stuff and not see everything. That was just one that caught my eye as, you know, as we were kind of going through this stuff. But, you know, there's a lot of cool bargains. 11 a.m. Eastern, whatnot, our NFL prediction show, props, plays, analysis for your fantasy lineups. Be there tomorrow. Love you, Luke and Nation. Thank you for an awesome, awesome week of comments, shows, engagement. We'll be back on Monday. Thank you all for listening to another episode of Lucas, Tigers, and Bronzo Mai. I wanted to tell you about a new service that we have starting as of today, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So as a part of our partnership with SGC, we got 50 free submissions every single month, and many of you have taken advantage of that. And it's amazing that we could have the opportunity to 650 episodes, 675 episodes in to go ahead and give back to our community. As people were sending those cards in, they asked, can we send 5, 10, 20 more cards to you guys? We'll pay for it, but we wanted them graded with SGC. You guys know SGC is turning cards around in 13 to 14 business days, uh, have incredible customer service, and their secondary market values are going up day after day after day. And that's exciting for the hobby and exciting for the grading landscape. So we didn't want to just rush into it. We wanted to do it right. And what we did was... I relocated here to Boca Raton, Florida. I opened up a P.O. box maybe five minutes away from SGC, and I will be hand-delivering and hand-picking up the cards so you don't have to worry about anyone else touching your cards. It will be me, and I will update you every step of the way. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to personally pick up the cards from a P.O. box, prep them, new card saver, new penny sleeve, and deliver them to SGC every single Tuesday. Why Tuesday? Well, It lets the stragglers over the weekend come back through on Monday 
and gives me a day to prep, and it basically gives SGC the entire week to work on grading those cards. Once your cards pop, only then at the end of the process will you be paying for the service. It's $25 per card, simple as that, and the turnaround times have never been faster. We're hearing right now 13, 14, less than 20 business days. So there it is, 9170 Glades Road, number 135 is the P.O. Box in Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. 9170 Glades Road, number 135, Boca Raton, Florida, 33434. Of course, you could shoot me an email or shoot me a text anytime, and I'm always available. Many of you already have my email. It's Goldberg at gmail.com or my cell phone number 215-519-9154. Reach out with any questions. I could walk you through the process. I've hopped on the call with quite a few of you, and I'm happy to do that. Love you, Luca Nation.